Hey there guys, in today's video I am going to be providing some enrichment for some giant sulcata tortoises. So if you have some sulcatas of your own and you want to see how I enrich them or you just want to watch something like that, uh, go ahead and stick around because that's going to be coming up right after this. <music> This is Jack over at High Red Bird, where I am tirelessly working to find new ways to make keeping of exotic animals and pets more exciting, more affordable, and ultimately more enjoyable. Uh, and in today's video, I am going to be providing some enrichment for my giant sulcata tortoises. Uh, now, something like this is really exciting to me because when I first started in animal care, uh, enrichment was not something that was thought of as being necessary for every single animal. Uh, at that point, we knew, yes, intelligent animals or what we consider intelligent animals needed enrichment, but a lot of other animals got pushed to the wayside, uh, most reptiles being in that group. Uh, by enriching reptiles, you can uh, help their body condition, help their mental stimulation. Uh, tortoises in general are very, very smart. They're trainable. Uh, you can work with them in a lot of different ways, so providing enrichment for them is an absolutely incredible thing to do. Uh, it will better the overall care of your animals. For any animal in my care, enrichment is a part of their overall care guidelines. Uh, so if you're thinking about doing something like this, uh, I recommend you go ahead and give it a shot. Um, if you're thinking about doing anything else in terms of enrichment for your animals, I encourage you to research it and give it a shot. You obviously want to make sure what you're doing is safe. Uh, but they really are going to benefit from it. So without further ado, let me go ahead and jump into this video uh, so you guys can see how they're being enriched and uh, how I managed to make that safe for them. So let's go ahead and get to that clip. All right, guys. So here for my sulcata tortoises, I have set up a giant foraging pile. Uh, now to build this foraging pile, I have used some heavy duty logs. Uh, you could use smaller branches but uh, that's going to be really easy for them to get around or even to go through. Uh, now these logs, these are going to be hackberry logs. I wanted to make sure I used a log that was going to be safe for these animals. Uh, the hackberry is non-toxic for them, and that was important because when these logs first went into the enclosure, they did still have some bark on them, and the tortoises would pick at it. Um, they were able to chew off a little bit, but honestly, most of the bark came off from these tortoises dragging these logs all over the yard. Uh, these logs are going to range from about 75 to 150 pounds. So for the biggest logs, when I want to stack something up like this, I'm able to move them. I'm just not very happy about it. It's pretty much the same way that I feel whenever I have to move my sulcata tortoises in if we have, uh, you know, an oncoming cold snap and they don't want to go into their barn willingly. Uh, luckily, they're pretty good about that. Now the point of this foraging pile is to encourage them to act on a couple of different behaviors since in the wild they wouldn't just get a tray of food directly in front of them. Uh, so you can see that I hide the food in a couple of different ways. I'll put some of the collard greens at the very top of the pile so you'll see the tortoises climbing up on the logs to be able to get to that. You'll see that I hide some of it underneath. Uh, when I first started doing this I had to hide a little bit more of the greens all around the pile, or by hide, I mean loosely scattered. You basically want to think of it as setting up an Easter egg hunt for a toddler. Uh, you're going to have it abundantly obvious. And then as the animal gets more comfortable with it, you can make it a little bit more complicated. Now, one thing I want to point out as I'm doing this foraging pile with these tortoises, uh, I wanted to make it safe. So you'll notice that the logs do not have excessive forking or uh, a variety of different branches. They're pretty much straight lines. Now the reason for that, if I had forking in those logs, uh, the concern would be that as the tortoises are pushing these logs around, that they could potentially cause a, a branch to fall on them with the full weight of that log, which could be very, very detrimental. Uh, it also would be a little less stable if you have an animal climbing up on top of it. So Colossus, 
that sulcata that's going to be in the top left corner of the screen right now. He is about 140 pounds. So I want to make sure that I'm providing him a pretty sturdy setup for him to climb up and over to get to those greens. Uh, now I also have Yertle. He's going to be the smaller guy in the bottom right. Uh, and then I also have Tank. Tank is the one with the really bad pyramiding. Uh, Yertle, as a smaller guy, likes to try to go under things. And Tank is the resident butthead of the yard. And he is mainly enriched by trying to steal food from the others. Now, all of my tortoises are going to be either rehomed or rescue tortoises. Uh, and so, in this situation, it does make me feel very good to be able to provide them enrichment because a lot of them come from instances where they didn't get enrichment or they didn't get proper care beforehand. So this is a great thing to take care of these animals uh, and I really love to show it off. All right guys, so as you can see, enrichment doesn't necessarily have to be the most high-tech, difficult, the most expensive thing to put together. Uh, but by just doing things in a way that causes your animal to interact with its environment a little bit differently, uh, you are stimulating them physically, mentally, emotionally. Uh, so it's definitely something that I encourage you guys to do. Uh, now, a lot of other animals are going to benefit from this same notion of enrichment of a foraging pile or a browse pile. Uh, so if that is something that you are willing to try with your animal, uh, why don't you go in the comment section down below and let people know what animal it is that you're going to be trying that with. That way they can see how this can apply to a variety of different species. Now, if you like this video, I encourage you to go ahead, give it a like, uh, subscribe to the channel. Those are some of the easiest ways that you guys can support me as I put together new videos. Uh, and they're absolutely free for you guys to do. So it's a really easy thing to do. Uh, I'm glad you guys are enjoying these videos so much. Uh, and I hope to see you guys next time. All right, thanks. Do Bye. I need to say thank you to my Patreon patrons for helping to make these videos possible. You can find out more by visiting High Red Bird on Patreon or clicking the link in the description section down below if you would like more information. Thanks.